All right, so now I want to show you how we can leverage the information component of building information modeling. So we have all our basic geometry in place. We have, when I scroll in here, we have our flooring. So our middle section is our ceramic tile that we laid in our previous lesson. We have our French oak flooring here. And we have our carpet, the two different styles of carpet here. So what I want to do is I want to create an original or an initial cost estimate. Find out how much is this material going to cost me. If I want to, I can roll in labor into that cost, but I'm more interested in, in uh, material at this point. So let's get it done. So I'm going to go ahead. First thing we need to do is we need to uh, go to each one of these floors and input some information. So let's start off here on the bottom. So I'm going to select my wall, and I'm just going to tab until it highlights my floor here. And what we need is some kind of a parameter that tells us how much this flooring costs per square foot. So if I select my floor and I go to the properties window here, there's really nothing here that tells me the cost. But I do get some really helpful information, mainly the area. I know that the area of this entire floor is 1,054.37 square feet. And that SF is how uh, square feet is denoted in Revit. And that's going to be important a little bit later on down the line when we run a calculation. So just keep that uh, that in mind here, that unit. So that's important. Perimeter could also be important as well, especially if it's maybe in an enclosed space. All right, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and edit the type. And let's see if we can't find some fields within this type that will allow us to put that information in. So if I scroll down and go down to the identity data within our type properties, I see there's an area called cost. So now I can just click in here, and I know look, we're going to say that that floor costs me $1.99, $1.99 per square foot. So I'm just going to put in $1.99. And as I mentioned before, if we wanted to do a material and labor, we could do a rough estimate by maybe adding what we estimate the labor would be in addition to the material cost. But we're mainly focusing on material at this time. So $1.99 for that material, I'm going to say Apply and OK. And I'm going to do the same thing for the other floors. Select the floor, edit type, go down to the cost identity data, and I'm going to assume that that tile is going to cost me roughly $1.19. All right, per square foot. So I'm going to say apply and OK. We're going to do the same thing for our carpeting up here on top. So let's say we want to go to our hallway carpet. Again, I'm going to select an edge here and tab until it highlights my whole floor. Edit the type. Go to the identity data. And I'm going to go ahead and type in a cost. And I'm going to assume that that hallway carpet, oh, it cost us about 99 cents. I'm going to say apply and OK. So now what we can do is we can actually create a nice schedule and then work with some more parameters to work on cost. And then by the end of this clip here, I'm going to show you how wonderful the change management component in BIM is with Revit as well. So to access our sheets or our schedules, we need to come to our right side of our screen and in our project browser, I can go all the way down here to where we have schedules and quantities. So now what we need to do is we need to right click on that and then go to new schedule quantity. I'm going to make sure that I'm in the architecture filter. And what we want to do here is come to our categories area and locate flooring, since this will be more of a floor type schedule. And there it is right there. So I'm going to say floor. And it automatically populate, populates this name space here with floor schedule. But this is more of a, I would say, flooring estimate, cost estimate. So we'll say flooring cost estimate. It will be for my new construction. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK. So now I can actually come in here and put in the properties I need. So we spent quite a bit of time building out our own families and types. So that's a parameter we're definitely going to want to have in here, or property we want to show up in our scheduled field. So let's see if we can find family and type. And there it is. So now I know what kind of flooring. I also want to know the area of each particular floor. So I'm going to go on Area, and I'm going to click on Add, and that'll bring that over to this field. Now, if I ever added something over that I didn't want to be sent over, so let's say we added this comments, and I realized, hey, that this doesn't need to be over there. I need to remove that. I can just click remove, and it will bring it right back over to this side. So now we know the type, the area, and I want to know 
the cost, the unit cost per floor. So I'm going to go ahead and add that as well. So now we have three really important parameters. I'm going to say OK, and voila, we've just created a really cool little sheet. You can see that the title we put in initially was updated in here. It's, we got family, type, area, and type. Now this order is going to be determined by what's going on here in my fields. So if I wanted to jump back and mess around with this and customize this a little bit more, I can go back to my properties in fields, click on edit, and I can mess with the order of these. So family was first, area, and cost. So let's say maybe we wanted to switch up area and cost. So I can select cost and I can come here to move up and it will move it up in order of priority. So now when I click OK, family, cost is now here in area. Pretty simple, right? So it's an easy way to kind of customize it. So for me, I'm going to go ahead and move this back. I want to see the area first. So I'm going to say OK. All right. We can also mess with the widths of these fields, very much like Excel. I can simply click in here and widen this out so I can get the entire name of my flooring. I can do it to each one of these cells as well. So everywhere we input in our model to the geometry where we put price, we have it right here. But you'll notice something. It looks like we forgot to include the price into our bedroom carpet. It looks like we only did it for the uh, hallway. This is a wonderful example. I'm going to show you how change management can occur. I can actually change my model from my schedule. So watch this. You notice our bedroom carpet here, we don't have a cost associated with it. I can come to any one of those fields and I can simply go, oh, we're going to say the bedroom carpet was a little bit more expensive and it cost us $1.09. I'll type in this and then anywhere in these fields where we see bedroom carpet, it'll populate that space. So I'm going to hit enter. Just as I said, this change will be applied to all elements of that particular type. So I'm going to say OK. And voila, updated our whole thing. And I also noticed something else. So I mentioned it, we can actually impact our model from our schedule as well. So let's say we didn't want to go with this oak floor, that graphite, the custom floor we made. I can select this. And from my drop down, I can locate all the, locate, uh, the system families within Revit. But I can also locate the ones that we created earlier. So if I wanted to look for the oak flooring with the walnut finish, I can do that. But when I do that, the square footage remains the same because it's the same geometry but the cost parameter is changed. So now I can put in a different cost associated with that. So I can say that floor may have been a little bit more expensive. So maybe that flooring cost me $2.09 per square foot. So I can hit enter. I'll say OK. And now it updated everything I needed to update. So I can jump back to my 3D model. I'm going to hide this roof and I'm going to show you how that change went from in my schedule to in my model. So you remember that French floor we got rid of or we swapped out for the oak floor with the walnut finish? That's what this is right here. It's like magic. Cool. So I'm going to jump back to my schedule. Take a look at it here. And there's a, so there's a few more things we're missing here. I want to show you how we can uh, mess with the units. I want to show you how we can create a customized uh, formula to create a nice total for the entire project. We have this broken down nicely. We know the type of flooring, the area, and the unit cost associated with each type of floor. But now I want to know how much the entire project is going to cost me. So we'll do that in the next clip. So I'll meet you there.